Hello again everybody out there in YouTube land, Boyd here with you and welcome back to Trekworks. Well this is a very special edition for you guys, this is our end of the year special here on the channel. We're going to be taking a look around the model display room today and showing you some of the models that we worked on in the last year out in the shop and talk about some of the things that are going to be upcoming here on the channel in 2014. So we're going to get to that in just a little bit. As you guys know we're going to be starting on our Polar Lights uh, refit kit here in the next couple of days. I wanted to uh, share that with you guys. We're going to be doing a really detailed buildup of this one. We're going to be using all the tenant controls, control boards, and doing the Aztec painting on this one and all the aftermarket parts. And uh, this particular build is going to be one of my most uh, detailed builds that I've ever done on the channel. I've gotten lots of people writing in uh, asking so many questions about the refit that I thought it would be a good idea to do a really comprehensive and in-depth build. So that can wind up being uh, several parts to the series. It'll probably take a good month and a half or two months, guys. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And uh, so that's going to be some of the things we're doing. Uh, we're going to be building several kits in 2014. As usual here on the channel, we're going to be getting in, into everything from Lost in Space to uh, Space 1999, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, a whole bunch more Star Trek, uh, some Star Wars, a whole bunch of other things going on on the channel. And I just wanted to say a big thank you again to everybody that's tuned in in the last year. We're uh, getting really close to uh, 5,000 subscribers on the channel. I appreciate uh, each and every one of you. And uh, special thanks to everyone who's... Uh, uh, allowed me to build some models for you guys and do the commission work in the last year. I can't believe the amount of work that's coming in and I really appreciate it guys and uh, we just sent off another one here to one of our clients and he's very happy with it so everything's going very well guys. Um, I wanted to, before we get to the uh, tour around the room here, I wanted to mention I've also been asked quite a few times uh, about some of the channels that are my favorites on YouTube and I wanted to mention a few of the others that are out there in the community uh, in no particular order here but uh, a lot of my uh, channels that I tune into on YouTube to find out some great modeling info. Uh, up, we've got uh, Chris over there at uh, Classic Plastic 101. Uh, Armando DLC, he's a relatively new modeler, but he's been doing a great job. He's part of several different online communities. He's got some great builds doing that, uh, that he's doing over on his YouTube channel. Uh, John, or Bad Grendels, John's a great guy, and he's uh, got a great channel where he shows a lot of instructional things, and he's very... Uh, helpful to the modeling community, showing uh, tips and tricks and things like that, and he's very active in the community. We've got Biomech Chad, that's Chadwick Savinsky over there. He's a great modeler as well and participates in a lot of the uh, online community stuff. Another great modeler I like to watch is Interstellar Modeler. He's got a nice uh, YouTube channel out there. Uh, those are mostly sci-fi type guys. Uh, another one of my favorites is uh, Dr. Cranky's Laboratory. Now He's more of a car modeling guy, but you guys... Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel yet, it's a great channel. He's uh, He does this kind of nutty, uh, mad scientist kind of thing on his channel, and it's really entertaining and really funny. And he does some great uh, uh, all-around modeling tips. I mean, it's like I said, primarily it's based on cars and things like that, but the things that you can learn over there about painting and prepping and everything like that, it applies to all types of modeling, and it's a very entertaining channel, and I really enjoy that one. Another great guy out there is Wet Willie CCMA. He does a lot of armor type building, but he's also into some sci-fi and things like that, so I hope you guys will check those channels out. Those are just a few of my favorites that I tune into quite often and follow up with. Um, I'll list all these guys at the end of the video here in the credits so you guys will get the proper spelling on them and you can find those out there. I hope you'll tune into the channels and uh, support those guys. So a uh, couple things about the channel, guys. In the next year, we're going to be doing a lot of things here. Uh, uh, upcoming very shortly, we're going to be starting the uh, sci-fi model action uh, show, which will be uh, a bi-weekly based show, I've mentioned it before, uh, talking about sci-fi modeling and sharing tips and uh, modeling news about products and kits and uh, we've got some great sponsors lined up for that. We're going to be presenting that here going into the first part of the year and uh, we've also got some exciting things going on uh, with the channel. The channel will have a new look with some new graphics and we're going to be doing some very interactive work with green screen and things like that to uh, give it a lot more professional appearance. But don't worry, we're going to stay to the meat and potatoes of the channel, which is getting a lot of work done on the bench and sharing a lot of building tips with you guys. So I hope you guys will get excited about that and tune in. And again, thanks to all the subscribers and uh, spread the word out there, guys, about the channel. And uh, thanks again for supporting it. So with that, guys, we're going to come back and uh, get set up here. We'll take you around our end of the year tour and a model kit review and show you some of the models on the shelf here that we've built in the last year and talk about those a little bit. So we'll come right back with that in just a second, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we're back, and it's time to kick off our 2013 year-in-review tour around the model room here. 
I want to say again thanks for everybody and I appreciate you guys writing in and asking me to show it to you this again this year. It's becoming kind of an annual thing here on the channel at the end of the year to go back and review everything we did. So let's start off here and take a look. You can see we have the original uh, AMT bridge that we built a couple years ago now and I just wanted to show you another view of this. It's still working good and everything. Uh, apologize for the glare coming from the plastic but I keep this uh, on there to keep dust from getting all over this. Um, I just recently bought the uh, repopped version of this kit from AMT that comes with the extra figures so we're going to be going back and adding Uhura and Chekhov and Dr. McCoy and then we'll have a full crew on the bridge and I'm looking forward to that. We may even build, go back and build the full circle there. We'll have to see but uh, that'll be coming up after a while here on the channel. Go back and revisit that one. And then we'll go over to the big shelf here, and you can see right up front we got the big guy there, the Atomic City Models uh, D7 Cruiser, the resin kit in studio scale that I got from Scott Alexander over there. I had a great time building this kit. I really love this one, and uh, love having it on display next to my Master Replicas Enterprise there in the back. They're both in the same scale. Here you can see we have the uh, Polar Lights, 1-1000 scale Klingon D7 Cruiser. Uh, we built that one up as a Romulan capital ship, the way that they were seen in... Uh, the original series of Star Trek from uh, the Enterprise incident in Season 3. And then here we have the uh, the old shoebox AMT Galileo 7 kit. Uh, there's a new kit out that's going to be coming out from round 2 models on this one in the next year or so. So we'll be getting that one and building it up. But I've also got the Randy Cooper uh, resin version of this kit, which is a really sweet kit. And we're going to be doing a build up on the channel here very soon of that one and doing all the lighting and everything on it. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. And then back tucked in here behind, you can see we've got the Diamond Select Wrath of Khan Enterprise refit from Star Trek II, the battle damage version. It's not really a model kit, but I really enjoy having that one in the collection here because uh, it's kind of hard to find now, and I bought it when it first came out. It's got some really cool sound effects on it and great conisms on it. And here you can see uh, we have the uh, Master Replicas Enterprise in studio scale, as they call it. It's more likely a 350 scale, but... Uh, Still have that one here on the display, and we have a couple of Bondi kits, the Enterprise Refit and the Enterprise E there in the background. And then here we have the Enterprise D, the clear version in 1 1400 scale that we built up here a while back on the channel, you guys will recall. That one's still looking good, and you can see that we used uh, the great uh, plaque and backlighting there from uh, Laser Fire Creations. Matt over there made those for me, and I'm, I've always been really pleased with how those turned out. Here you can see we have a 1-1000 scale Polar Lights Enterprise kit, which was built up as the ISS Enterprise from uh, the episode Mirror Mirror. And then we have our Enterprise NX-01 here in 350 scale. This was part of our uh, Project 350 build series that we did on the channel in this last year. If you guys remember, we had a great time with that. We built up all three of the 350 scale Enterprise kits from Polar Lights, and uh, she's still really looking good. And all of her lighting and everything is still coming through really nice on it. Down below here you can see the Bondi uh, Voyager uh, that we've got all lit up there. And here this is a Ravel uh, 148 scale Darth Vader's uh, TIE Fighter kit. This is a snap tight kit but I did some nice weathering on this. And I really like this kit because it's really accurate. And it uh, also comes with a really nice little uh, Darth Vader figure in the cockpit there that you can see if you look really close in the window. And that's a fun kit. And down below here, if you guys will remember, we've, this is the kit that started it all off. We bought this from Ralph Tanagli over at Tenet Controls. This is our 350 scale uh, Enterprise uh, A. And uh, I bought this kit over two years ago, and this is the kit that inspired me to get back into modeling and started the Trekworks channel and got me into building models, models again after about a 25-year hiatus. You guys remember it has these special effects and things. We'll go ahead and power up the uh, deflector grid. And uh, everything's still working great on this model. We'll kind of get you around the back here if we can and show you the uh, the uh, detailed shuttle bay in that one. If I can get my camera in there correctly. Can't see it from here, but hopefully you guys are seeing that. And uh, that one's still doing really well. Up here we have the uh, repopped AMT Klingon D7. Uh, actually, this is the Katinga Klingon Battle Cruiser that we built up a while back. We used all the nice uh, JT graphics. Uh, aftermarket resin parts to make the uh, forward section and the rest of the model a lot more screen accurate. And of course we mounted it on this really nice base from my friend Dave, uh, Wolf359, over at uh, Sci-Fi Model Action that makes these bases. We added the sound and it turned out really beautiful. You guys have seen the video of that. We also have the Starling uh, 
forward firing and rear firing photon torpedo effect, which I'm going to crank this up for you real quick and have you take a look at that. Some of you guys may not have seen it before. And I've always loved that effect ever since we got that one. That's a lot of fun. And then down below here, oh, she didn't want to quit. I'm going to have to turn it off real quick, guys. Down here we have the um, Richard Petty Dodge Charger that you guys built. Now, this isn't a sci-fi model, but I had a lot of fun with this one. This one we did for the uh, DJ Scratchy and Chevy Cheeseburger box stock community build. Uh, I really enjoyed it participating in that, and I'd like to see a lot of the modeling communities uh, start doing things like that. This was an out-of-the-box build, as they called it. It was a lot of fun to uh, go in and build a model kit. Uh, right out of the box and uh, with, with uh, no add-ons or anything like that and it was uh, really fun to participate and those guys all did a great job on it. We'll show you the engine in this thing here and uh, you can see all the detail that we did on this kit and I hadn't built a car, a serious car model in quite a few years and I was really uh, really enjoyed working on that so then here we have the uh, Reliant that you guys remember we built a while back here uh, this is the uh, round two repopped version, which is more accurate than the original kit. We used a bunch of aftermarket parts on this. Uh, we used the uh, paragraphics photo etch stuff. We used the DLM lighting parts, tenant controls lighting system, and the round two uh, aftermarket Aztec decals. And you can see those all here on the top. It's still looking really good. I'll get you a shot of the back here so you can see the uh, shuttle bay doors and that really nice photo etch detail that you get from paragraphics. And uh, really happy with this kit still. You can see again we have it on this nice stand with some more of the uh, laser fire creations uh, backlit plaque there and the control panel. And here you guys remember our little fun project I did on the channel. We did the uh, our little die cast Chevelle here which we took it apart and repainted it to make it look my, like my old original high school car. That was a lot of fun. And then here we have a die cast version of the uh, Christine from the movie Christine. I love that movie and I love the car. And uh, so I just kind of have that on display in here. Moving up top here now, we can see we did the uh, Barnabas Collins Vampire Van. We did that uh, a while back. Another model kit for a car model kit. I hadn't built one of these in years. I built one, this kit originally when I was a kid. It was one of my favorites, and I did such a horrible job on it back then that I uh, got glue all over it and bad paint job and the usual. And I wanted to come back and build that again. You can see we've got old Barnabas along for the ride there in his coffin. Had a lot of fun building that one up. And then here you can see our uh, Enterprise refit that we did, uh, another part of the sh uh, series that we did for Project 350. And uh, we did all the uh, Aztec painting on this. I'm hoping the camera is picking this up for you. I'll try to get you some angles here that will show it for you. And we did the uh, Tenant Controls uh, photon firing effect and the fading uh, deflector dish. And uh, used the Orbital Dry Dock ma uh, painting masks on this and it turned out really, really nice. I'll take you around the front of it here and show you the uh, photon firing effect again. I always love hitting that thing. And of course we've got the dish that changes colors. And then here we'll come in with the amber dish. So yep, I really enjoy building this model and uh, looking forward to building this next one here that we just talked about. We've got our nice flood lamp effect there on the top. And we did that bridge modification to that. If you guys remember to get the uh, floodlight there where we moved the bridge a little bit farther forward. And uh, so she came out really good. And uh, up here we have the uh, AMT Ertl Cutaway Enterprise. This has been a long time ago now that I built this kit, going on three years. But she's still working just fine as you can see in the shot there. We did some lighting on that and some nice paint work on the interior. And then we had the uh, AMT Ertl repopped uh, Vulcan Shuttle that we used the DLM lighting parts on that and did that up as a Federation version and we did a kind of a neat little trick on that where we made it so where the uh, top can be detached and our lighting will work on that. And then here we have the uh, Monogram Classic Battlestar Galactica kit. I built this up over on the other channel on the Sci-Fi Model Action channel so some of you guys may not have seen it but uh, I'll just show you a quick look at this one today. We did some nice lighting and everything on it and just uh, showing you that you can do a little bit of work to this model and some weathering and a little bit of lighting and actually looks like a pretty nice representation of the original Battlestar. It's great to see that Mobius is re-releasing this kit now. Uh, hopefully it's a, a nice, accurate, nice-sized kit. 
So I'm looking forward to that one coming out. We've already got the Viper Mark I here that we'll be building up on the channel pretty soon. And here's one of my favorites. This is the uh, Disney's The Black Hole Maximilian Robot. And you can see we've got that nice pulsing light effect there at his visor. And that was another one of Ralph's boards from Tenet Controls that he set me up with. I've got this guy set up with a 9-volt battery inside. And he's self-powered, and I had a lot of fun putting him together. And then here we have the Mobius uh, C-View, the 8-window version in 1128 scale. Uh, you guys remember I also built this one up on the Sci-Fi Model Action channel. And uh, we did that nice emergency room lighting that we can switch back and forth. And uh, it really turned out nice. I really like that model as well. We've actually got uh, the four-window version coming in here very soon that we're going to be building up uh, with the uh, flying sub that's included with it. So we'll have both versions of the ship. And then down here we have the uh, another fun kit that I worked on. This is the Alien Xenomorph from the first movie, Alien. And uh, MPC has just recently uh, repopped this kit. I had a lot of fun putting it together. I did a lot of nice uh, detail painting on it, and we even did the uh, drool there on the front coming out of his mouth. We did that with a little bit of uh, clear silicone and let it dry, and I think the effect turned out pretty nice. Over here you can see we've got the mighty uh, 1350 scale space battleship Yamato. Let me go ahead and uh, turn this guy on for you real quick here, and uh, we'll let the gun cycle through. Some of you may not have seen this one yet. We just recently finished this one up and uh, we've moved it into the uh, display room here. We've got the nice uh, lights there at the top on the uh, tower and uh, it just turned out absolutely beautiful. And uh, we've got the animated guns. We'll go ahead and move those for you. And uh, fire that. And of course we've got the uh, wave motion gun there. And then we've got the cool little guns that move in the middle, and you can see, and the star drive. It's going to be hard to see that from here, but uh, that back engine there in the back lights up and makes a nice rocket engine effect. And that's our 350 scale space battleship Yamato. Again, I had a great time building that up. And we did some nice weathering and everything on that one. And down here you can see we've got our Into Darkness Enterprise by Ravel in 1500 scale. We used the uh, Tenet Controls uh, lighting on that one. And I uh, had a great time putting that one together. We also used the Orbital Dry Dock masks on that and did all the nice Aztec painting on that and some nice pearlescent colors. They don't really show up too well in here, guys, because the light's not hitting it just right. But when I open my shades during the day and the sunlight hits this thing it just dazzles I really like how that turned out and here you can see we have the AMT Enterprise B we didn't do any lighting on this one but we used some DLM aftermarket decals which made it look a lot more accurate and uh, I really had fun putting that model together it's hard to believe it's been almost three years ago now that I put that one together and then moving up top here we see we have the uh, old AMT K7 uh, space station this is one of the very first kits that I put together uh, we did that one a long time ago when I was first learning lighting. Now I've actually got another kit of this, a updated kit, and I'm going to be going back and rebuilding this. And uh, I wasn't very good at doing my seams and things back then, and I wasn't too happy with the lighting that I got on the towers there. So I'm going to be re re uh, redoing that one here in the near future. And here you can see one of our original builds too, the uh, Romulan uh, Bird of Prey from the classic Star Trek by AMT. Uh, and this is one of the very first builds that I did on the channel as well. I had a lot of fun with that one. It's still going strong. And here's one of my another one of my diecast favorites. This is uh, President Kennedy's car from uh, 1961 and 1961 Lincoln uh, stretch limousine. And I always thought it was just a very beautiful car. And I got this just recently. It has a really nice, uh, fully detailed interior in it, as you can see there. And then we here we have the Mobius uh, Space Pod from Lost in Space. This was a pre-built unit that I bought and I got a really great deal on it and I just had to have it. And uh, up next we have the C-57D Space Cruiser Kit from Polar Lights uh, from Forbidden Planet. Now I did some lighting on this one. You can see we lit the star drive there and we've got some nice lighting coming out of each one of these uh, 
uh, stairwells here, and I think that one turned out really good. I've got that one self-powered too. I mounted a 9-volt battery and a switch inside of that. Then we have our Enterprise uh, C up here. You guys will remember this kit. It's still looking good and going strong. And down here we have the uh, AMT Ertl USS Defiant. Again, this one's been about two years or so since we built this one up. And uh, I had a lot of fun. It was a lot of work to paint all those panels and everything on there, but uh, it turned out really well, and she's still looking good here. Another one of my uh, die-cast cars, one of my favorites. My wife gave me this as a gift. This is the 118 scale Munsters car, the Munsters coach. And I'm sure this is a lot of your guys' favorites. I think this is so nice looking and so detailed. They've even got real felt here in the back. Uh, in the passenger area and that's just so cool really like having that one and here you can see the monogram uh, Cylon Raider from the classic Battlestar series I don't have it lit right now because I ran out of plug-in spots here for it but uh, we had fun building that one you can see we did some nice weathering detail and everything on it and we have the uh, actual little Cylon guys in there piloting it and all that lights up and everything when it's plugged in but uh, we had a lot of fun building that one and um, Let's see, what else have we got here? We've got the uh, 350 scale Polar Lights Classic Enterprise. Now this is the very first one that I built up. Hard to believe I've built six of these since then. Actually five, including this one. We did this one as the second pilot version, if you guys remember, as part of uh, Project 350. And uh, she's still looking good here. Everything's working great. I'll show you the uh, uh, shuttle in there. Still all lit up and everything. And uh, had a blast working on that. You can see we've got the unique... Uh, engine caps there on that one from the second pilot edition down here you can see we did the Christine Dragster recently here on the channel I had a lot of fun whoops this hood's knocked loose on that let's get that straightened out we had a lot of fun putting that one together as well and uh, again another car kit and here's an interesting model uh, this is the 1 1000 scale Enterprise refit kit by uh, Polar Lights and we use the Brad Hare uh, battle damaged uh, saucer section there from the Enterprise as it was seen in Star Trek 3 after she self-destructed and uh, we built this model for uh, the sci-fi uh, fans and modelers United group uh, Chris Whitford over there did his iron modeler challenge and it was we were challenged to build a model in just a few days and uh, so this is a kit that I built up we used uh, some paragraphics photo etch battle damage parts there to uh, make some of the holes in the hull and the pylons and things like that and uh, put all the Aztec decals on it here you can see we have the uh, base. I did a little bit of custom airbrushing on there to kind of give it that explosion look that we saw when it blew up in the movie with the registration number. And we had a lot of fun with that one too. Well guys, that's pretty much a wrap on this. Uh, that's a look around the old uh, Star Trek room here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be adding many more in the next year. It's uh, I'm going to turn this uh, overhead light down here a little bit and maybe you guys can get a little bit view of everything in lower light here. And uh, uh, I'm hoping that everybody will have a great time in the next uh, year here building uh, the, your own models coming up in 2014. Again, mentioning we're going to have a lot of stuff going on on the channel here as well. And hope you guys will tune in and check it out. Uh, have fun building your models out there. Have a great holiday season. And uh, we'll catch up with you all a little bit later, guys. Until we see everybody later, take care, everybody, and happy modeling, everyone.